How do you travel the world full time? Were you scared in Afghanistan? How do you make money? Do you want to go to every country in the world? What was your most dangerous travel experience? Where are you from? How are you always traveling? Today I am answering all of your questions and more. But look, we just came in the mail. Do you know what this is? I finally have my YouTube plaque. I am so excited. I've always wanted one of these to hang on my wall. So while I open this, I'm gonna answer all of the questions that you guys have been asking in all of the comments and in the Q&A post that I posted. I didn't bring a knife, should I have done that? First, let me just do a quick little intro. My name is Chloe Jade. I am trying to go to every country in the world. As of today, I have been to 114 countries. I've been traveling since 2015. I'll get to that story about how I first started traveling in a moment. I just feel really lucky that I've been able to make my life what it is. I've been able to turn traveling into my career and I'm gonna talk about how I first started traveling, how I was able to get money to travel when I first started traveling, making money on the road, my whole journey with freelancing and then ultimately doing what I do now. Let's get into it. While I try to get this tape off, let me answer the first question. How do you make money? Let me take a breath before I start to try and explain this. <laughs> When it comes to being a travel creator or a creator in general, it is not always about the number of followers that you have. As of right now, I have 313,000 followers on TikTok, 165,000 on Instagram, and 165,000 on YouTube. Thanks everyone. And that's crazy to me. I can't believe, you know, that it's developed into this, but it's definitely not always about how many followers you have that can translate into being able to make money. Engagement is so important. Uh, having an audience that is a specific niche that you cater to. I talk a lot about food, local culture, the products that I use, my daily life. I also have other random interests and I like to be really authentic and share those interests. So a lot of times I will approach a brand or a brand will approach me. I get to utilize the product and see if I like it. And then if I like it, I'll share it with my audience. So if you are wanting to become a travel creator, I would just say be really authentic to yourself and really find brands that you want to work with. And a lot of times, if you are making an authentic video, it can do well regardless of how many followers you actually have. But I feel like that's a whole different video because I'm just talking about how I make money. So let me get back to that. One. I do get paid for views on TikTok and YouTube. It's not crazy for me. It's not a huge percentage of my money, but it is money, right? That's so that is contributing to my income. I also have done brand trips with different tourism boards. Not all of these trips pay. Not all hotel collaborations pay. Actually, I would say most hotel collaborations do not pay in my experience. Usually hotel collaborations are giving you a free night stay in exchange for deliverables online. But some tourism boards do pay. That is not the biggest money maker for me. For me, it is brand deals. Like I said, I work with brands that I trust and that I like or that I've tried and I think it's a good product. And I do charge a specific amount so that I don't have to push so many brands to make enough money. I say no to brands a lot, which obviously you're looking at money and that's hard. But for me, I've gotten to this point in my career on here where I am able to say no to certain brands and charge what I feel I need to charge in order to not just flood and bombard my audience with a bunch of random products. So I do hope that when you see me doing a sponsored video or you see that I'm promoting a product, it is actually something that I use and that I care about. And it's not just post a video and say, oh, sucks if it doesn't do well. The last one. Okay, I have it open, but I'm not gonna share it with you yet. I wanna answer some more of these questions. Okay, so the next question was, how do you stay connected in every country? Do you buy SIM card? This is a really great one. So I think that having a way to communicate with the outside world and a phone that works when you're traveling is so important, especially as a solo woman traveling or just as a woman in general or a person in general. I have an iPhone 14 Pro. And when I first got this phone, I realized that the ones that are sold in the United States no longer have a physical SIM card in them. I don't think that a lot of people know this. And for me, that was a shock because I'm someone who always bought physical SIM cards when I got to country. So now essentially I can only ever use eSIMs, which is an electronic SIM card. This is essentially the same thing as a physical SIM card, except it's just completely electronic in your phone. 
I thought it would be hard to install when I first found out about them, but it's actually so simple and easy. I love it. And it was something that I could no longer go without. So now I have actually shown a few different eSIMs all over my social media. I would say the best one that I've found so far has been Airlo. There are options to buy one gigabyte, three gigabytes, five gigabytes, 10, 20, 30, 50. You can buy it for one single country. You can buy it for a region. And they even have one for the entire world, which is really crazy, especially if you're doing like a long trip and you want to go to different parts of the world and you want your phone to work automatically when you cross the border. Landing and having your phone work in a new country that you've never been to is one of the most liberating things ever. For example, I bought an Asia SIM card and I was able to use that for an entire month. It worked for 14 countries, which is a lot, and it covered my entire trip that I was going to. So when you buy individual eSIMs, you do have to press the button to turn them on or off. But with the Asia SIM, all I had to do was just land and turn on my phone and it worked in that country. Having the regional SIMs if you're going to a region is so easy and it's the best option, but obviously you can buy them for different countries too and it's just as easy. I can't even tell you how many hours I've spent going to SIM card places in order to try and get a SIM card. You have to give your passport. You have to wait in line. Sometimes the machines don't work. I mean, there's one thing after another. Also when an Airlo eSIM does not work, they have a support line. So you just contact their support line and they help you. Now I have to say I am really excited and this is actually a big deal for me because I've been using Airlo for over a year now. I use them in Afghanistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, all over Asia, all over West Africa. I've used them in so many countries and Airlo decided to sponsor this video. So thank you Airlo for that. I'm really excited to continue to share Airlo's message with the world. The best thing is that I have a code for $3 for free. So you can just try Airlo with no strings attached. So please use my code because when you get $3, I also get $3. It is so worth having the ease of service when you land. It makes me feel safe while traveling, which I think is so important. Now I want to flash back. I want to tell you how I first started making money while I was traveling and how that became what I'm doing now. Back in 2012, I started posting on Instagram. I started posting fitness related things because I was in the fitness industry. I started training for a fitness show and I started posting that on my Instagram, I quickly gained a following and I actually grew that up to, I think 130,000 followers on Instagram back in 2013. So this was a totally different world of Instagram. There were no stories. I posted disgusting mirror pictures with my super messy college bedroom. I mean, it was a mess. It was like, I, I look back at these photos and I'm just like, I can't believe I posted this, but that's growth, right? Through Instagram, while I was still in college, I was able to create an online personal training and diet coaching program. I sold these online. I eventually turned that into a seven day jumpstart program and I worked directly with people, but I was able to sell those quicker and I turned that into a business and it was amazing. I also did some in-person clients because that was a lot of fun for me. And then for the next two years, that is what I did. And I was making pretty good money with it. Like I said, Instagram was really different back then. There was not a lot of people who had a lot of following. So being in the fitness industry at that time, I did have the ability to actually make an impact and it was really cool. I saw people getting really healthy and getting in shape and it was awesome and I loved it. Flash forward in 2015, I went to Thailand for the first time on a family trip for two and a half weeks and I was just in love. I had been to Europe a couple times, but I was so enthralled by Thailand and I was just like, I wanna stay here. I was still making money from my business. I was able to work from anywhere. So I ended up being there for about six months, living there, going on little trips here and there. I was still a tourist. I was not really living there, let's be honest. I rented a little place. I was on a tourist visa. I was traveling to different countries in Southeast Asia. This was really my first idea of nomadic travel and essentially being a digital nomad. I didn't even really know what that was at that point. After those six months were up, I came back to the US and I was just obsessed. 2016, the very beginning of the year, I had just gotten out of a really bad relationship. I decided to go on a trip with one of my best friends and we went for one month to Asia. We went to Hong Kong, we went to Thailand, and we went to Macau and it was amazing. I got back and immediately I was like, okay, I need to leave now. I wanna go travel again. So I packed a suitcase actually and like two other bags. I had way too much stuff. <laughs> and I started traveling. I did a solo Euro trip all over Europe by myself. And to be honest, it was a really hard trip for me. It was really depressing. It was cold because it went from February through April. So it was just miserable. And then I was finally like, I don't wanna be here anymore. And then eventually I ended up meeting with two girls through this app called Backpacker. And there were so many weird men on there that were like trying to hit on girls. And it was such a weird vibe on the app, but I happened to meet these two really cool girls. And we were just like a perfect trio for traveling. We had so much fun. We went all 
all over Southeast Asia together. Uh, I ended up going to India with Maddie. And then I came back for Thanksgiving. So I came back for one month and I decided to embark on another journey. But this time I was taking a backpack because I knew better. And I set off for Latin America. I spent, I think six months backpacking through Central and South America. It was an amazing trip. I saw so much. Actually, when I was trying to get my Brazilian visa, I had this crazy situation happen to me. I was at Iwazu, which is some of the biggest waterfalls in the entire world. And it comes at a trifecta with Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay. I tried to get my Brazilian visa and I gave my passport and they're like, you don't have any space. What? And at the end of my passport, I didn't realize, but there are two pages and they are for endorsements. It's not a visa page. So I couldn't get any more visas. I freaked out, couldn't go to Brazil. So I booked a ticket to South Africa. And then I traveled for about six months traveling through Eastern and a little bit of Northern Africa backpacking through. And that was just an amazing, incredible trip. So that was an amazing year. During all of this time of traveling, basically no one cared about my fitness stuff anymore. And I was also not in shape anymore. I was no longer working out. So my platform didn't work. I began to lose and lose and lose and lose following until I think I got down to about 70,000. And I was like, I don't care about this anymore. I'm done with social media. I'm just gonna make a new page and it'll be like my personal traveling page. Used that for a while. Didn't really try and gain a following. The end of 2017, coming back from my travels through Africa, I decided to move to New York City. So November, 2017, I moved to New York City. Got my real estate license. I had already had my license in California, but I got my license there and I started working in real estate. I continued to do trips through 2018. I did, you know, shorter trips a week, two weeks, and I lived in New York City. On my dad's side of the family, his whole family, when they immigrated to the United States, they immigrated to New York City. So that was always something that was in the back of my mind. While I was in New York, I was not loving being in real estate. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world. And I decided I had to figure something else out. So I started freelancing and I started doing freelance writing. I decided that I wanted to do travel writing and I wanted to learn how to do SEO. So I self-taught essentially, and I did some Udemy courses and I went on Upwork, which I think is an amazing site to be able to start freelancing. And I built a company just by freelancing. I took those clients and I developed them into retainers and I really was able to start a business doing SEO writing and travel writing. Granted, it wasn't the best money in the world and New York was definitely cheaper. Than it's crazy how the rent prices have gone up, but I was able to support myself. Now I took the travel writing and the SEO and I was doing marketing as well, copywriting, things like that. And I started saying, I, I wanna travel again. I don't just wanna be here. So I was renting out my apartment and I was traveling. And I went to a bunch of different places over the course of 2018, 2019. Then 2019, end of it hits. And I say, okay, I really wanna full-time travel for a while. So. 2020, February, I took off on a trip with Dilara. I think it was February 8th. Obviously we know what happened in the next month and a half, right? COVID hit, it was crazy. I feel horrible because I really thought it was not a big deal at all. And I saw on some Facebook travel groups that people were going to Bali just because they knew they were gonna shut down the island. So they knew that nobody was going to be able to get into the island. Which meant that it was essentially going to be a safe place to be, to ride out for a few weeks. I ended up being in Bali for over six months. And I feel so lucky that we were able to be there. And I feel honored that I was able to experience Bali at that time, just because it was so serene and beautiful. And it was really nice to be able to make connections with locals and go places without it being such a tourist haven. Now on one hand, it was horrible because the people of Bali were really suffering because there was no tourism, but selfishly, it was beautiful to see Bali during that time. Throughout that time, I was doing the SEO and I was writing and I was doing all of that, actually working quite a lot because the pay for that is pretty low, but I was able to work a little bit less than I was working in New York City. Obviously the cost of things is lower in Bali and I didn't have that income from doing the real estate in New York, but I was able to fully sustain myself with that. It was at this point that Dilara was like, what are you doing with your old big account? Why are you not using it? And I was just like, ah, I don't know. I'm not sure if Reels had been introduced yet, but I started posting a little bit. It was really cool to connect with people again. However, from that 70,000 that was left, I lost it down to like 30,000. I wanna say fully, but I really lost a lot of my following. And then slowly started gaining a little more. I was losing forever, it felt like. And then finally when Reels started happening and I started focusing on that, I started building my content creation business and working with brands. And then May, 2021, I was back in New York and I decided to start TikTok. And this was a huge turning point for me because with TikTok, I really started to develop the style I think that you can see now, which is where I do a voiceover. I show you a place that I went. I talk about the culture, the food, etc. I like to share luxury. I like to share the realistic things that I see when I travel. I had always had this goal of going to every country. So it's really 
really cool to be able to share this journey, especially now that I'm really in it and I'm more than halfway there. It's so exciting to be able to share with people that actually care and are actually interested in seeing the world as well. But that's how I got to where I am today and what I'm doing now and that is how I make money and that is how I've always made money. My day-to-day -day life and everything is fully sustained on content creation. So it is really good for people to know that this is totally possible and if it's something that you want to do or if you just want to travel and make money 1000% go on Upwork or try to start freelancing in other ways. Reach out to companies that you want to provide services for. Look for remote jobs. It is possible. It is not the easiest thing in the world and you're going to have to work really hard at the beginning but it is possible. Oh my gosh. Need to get some water after that. That was that was a big one. But let me show you what comes first in the box. So this is a letter from the CEO of YouTube. This is really cool. I love how YouTube celebrates creators because you do feel really appreciated and it makes you excited. Next question. Why do you always whisper? So this is the situation. I wanna say that I'm not whispering, but when I'm sitting here with my phone recording, why would I speak louder? Do you know what I mean? Do you want me to yell into my phone like this and project my voice? Or if I talk like this, when I'm just speaking in a normal voice, it's how it comes across. And also, I'm not sure if you realize this, but a lot of times if you speak too loudly, it spikes the microphone and it like really annoying and loud so i just speak at a normal volume when i'm speaking into my phone additionally i have said that i do record a lot at night when i have someone sleeping in the same room as me or when i'm in a hotel i feel a little shy and i don't want to be that person who's like yelling into their phone while people next door can hear you because i don't know about you but i've heard people yelling next to me and maybe i should do a story time on this but it is really annoying when you hear somebody talking next to you in a hotel and weird and you feel uncomfortable so i'm not whispering i'm just seeing me speaking into my phone and depending on what time of day it is, I am louder or softer, so. This is a fun one. What camera is good to start? Not too expensive. So I personally, for my photography, I use a Sony a7 III. I love this and I really do love photography as well. I have a bunch of different lenses, but if you're not a photographer, I don't necessarily think that is the best camera to have. Back in the day when Instagram was all about pictures, yes, that was a great camera to have. But for now, if you're just trying to vlog or you just wanna do Instagram, honestly, all you need is your phone. Having an iPhone, for some reason, the camera seems to be the best. I know there are Samsungs that are really great. I just don't know them. If you are going to make any kind of investment into content creation, I would say get a iPhone 14 Pro or 15 Pro. But I would say that you can really start creating great content with an iPhone if you just focus and you get a good light and things like that. I actually have a whole thing on my Amazon storefront of all of the stuff that I use. So you can check that on there. But I would say good light, good mic, iPhone, and you're good to start. I also use an old Canon EOS. That's what I'm recording on right now. It has a little screen that you can flip so I can see myself and I know where I am in position. And I think they actually discontinued these, but you don't need a really great digital camera in order to start vlogging. It's funny though, I use Canon and I use Sony, so I love them all. I love this one. How do I take photos of myself if I want to solo travel? First off, I love solo travel. I've done so much solo traveling and it's such an amazing feeling because you have such different experiences. But how do you think I'm recording myself right now? I'm using a tripod. Tripod is the way to go. It's the best thing to have. Even if you're just using your phone for stuff, get a small tripod, prop it up. I know it used to be a thing that people would run by, steal your camera or steal your phone. In my experience, this is not a thing at all. Please don't come at me and sue me if this happens to you. And I'm so sorry if that happens to you, but I, I can't see that happen. Also use awareness and don't leave a extremely expensive object in the middle of something and go run away, have it video you. For the most part, just get a tripod and you should be good to go. I had someone ask, what is your country order right now? How are you selecting your next destination? That is a good question. Every year at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year, so right now I'm making my list for 2024, I just do a big list of every place that I wanna go that year based on the months, what I think is the best time and kind of group them together like Nigeria, Niger, Cameroon, CAR. That could also be one trip because they're close to one another. You gotta plant on the rainy season for a lot of countries. So right now I'm kind of crafting my 2024 and I'm figuring out costs and I'm figuring out logistics. Then obviously things will potentially change during the year. Sometimes I get opportunities and somebody reaches out and says, hey, do you wanna do this trip? 
of course, a lot of the time I'll say yes because that's an awesome experience. And then based on that, I will rearrange things. I'll add countries in, obviously trying to make it the most cost effective in order to fly to one region and travel around that region. In other situations, sometimes two countries have crazily good flights to connect them. And so I'll add that on and I'll be in one part of the world and then fly to the other part. And then other times I don't do a great job. I really want to go somewhere. And I waste way too much on a ticket, so we balance things out. Sometimes it's just like, I really wanna to go to this place, so I'm gonna make it happen. Or I get really excited to go somewhere, which is actually my next trip, so I'm really excited to share that one. And actually, it's a birthday trip for Dilara, so we can't tell her, even though she's gonna watch this. So I can't tell you. So just weighing the pros and cons of everything. I would really like to be third when I finish every country in the world. And I'm 29 now. It doesn't have to be before I'm 30 or in the middle. It can be the day before I turn 31, but I'm hoping to complete it before then. So we'll see if I make it. I got this card in here. It says, congratulations on your subscriber milestone. We are honored to take part in recognizing your achievement and want your experience to be exceptional. This award was inspected and packaged with great care by Rick. Thanks, Rick. It's time! Ready for this? I will be recycling them. Yay! I'm pretty excited. Presented to Chloe J Travels for passing 100,000 subscribers. Time for my award speech. I could not have done this without all of you. Thank you so much for caring about what I'm even doing and supporting me and being active subscribers and sharing my videos and being here. Thank you so much. I literally could not be here if it wasn't for the people that care about my content. So again, thank you so much. Now we gotta figure out where to hang it. <laughs> <laughs>